Hey guys, how are you? Haven't done a face-to-face -face for crypto in a while, so I'm going to do it now. Um, I suppose my pet peeve um, is often the motivator for my narrative. And um, my pet peeve at the moment is belief systems um, in terms of uh, trading. And uh, especially when I think of narrative, you'll get some person who provides a narrative that everybody feels comfortable with and latches on because it eh, aligns with a belief system. So at, in my view at the moment, there's a lot of disappointed crypto hands that are waiting for the next major move to the upside. In other words, it's long only environment for them in terms of how they approach the market. Um, I've used the analogy before, but I'm going to keep using it. They have a nutcracker in their hands, so everything is a nut. Um, and they're not noticing, recognizing, or um, engaging with the market in terms of where it's truly at right now. Um, and I get some people that are, oh, he's always bearish, he's always a bear, whatever. No, it's just recognize the season and recognize what you're getting. Um, and then adapt your strategy accordingly. You know, we've had five or six short trades, all of which uh, have been profitable in uh, crypto land. So the narrative that was the current one that I heard umpteen times and I tried to resist as many times as possible uh, and say, look, um, you know, don't think like this was, well, after consensus, we're going to have a small dip and then we're going to pump, you know. Somebody said this and said, you know, three years in a row it's happened, you know. Three years in a row, therefore... Um, Therefore, it's going to happen again. You know, the probable, you know, the, a higher probability that this is uh, the event. You know, my birthday where I grew up um, tied in with the rainy season, and it would quite regularly rain, and I'd want to have parties or go ride on the train, and my parties would get washed out and cancelled often. And then, you know, kind of to cheer me up, my mum or my dad would say, "Well, that means it's going to be a good year for you. You know, you, your birthday party got washed out." Um, it's it's a good year and three years in a row it did actually get washed out and I didn't have bad years generally um, and you know what do you want to say do you want to say if it rains on my birthday I'm going to have an awesome year um, no of course not and this is the difference between correlation and causation we've been for three years since the big 18 month um, post Mount Gox bear in a largely consistently accumulating bull run. And what tends to happen in something like consensus, which is, was the biggest show, and I wasn't there this year, I was there last year, is that a lot of people get together, they talk a lot of stuff, and then a lot of money might move, or some of the smarter money might have moved before in a bull environment. In a bull environment. So what tends to happen is, Markets wait for key events and then go and do what they're going to do. And the news is not specifically the cause of it. It is just the allowance of let's wait till it gets out the way that there's nothing bad to come out. And then we're going to do what we were probably always going to do. Kind of like a non-farm payroll can sometimes be in the FX markets. You can get a bad number on NFP. The market dips for a few seconds and then it goes up for the dollar. Um, and it was in an upward trend prior to that. And then it paused for a while. It thought, oh, we got a bad number. Um, it shrugs a bad number off after a short dip when you get all your news reactors sell it off. And then there's no follow through. And then it changes up. It's not about the non-farm payroll. It's about the fact that it was in a bullish trend in the first instance, paused for a while just to let a news event get out the way. And once once what was rumor is now fact, gets on to do what it was going to do anyway in terms of points. And when you have three years of bull market and you then have a major event, which is deemed significant, what then happens is the market may wait for a few people who positioned early to shuffle their decks for a short while and then carry on up. You know, nothing scary came out of consensus. It's broadly um, a nice PR show of reasonable success um, and uh, we're in a bull market so we're going to carry on up. Um, it's not consensus that made it a bull market. 
you know it's just how do we deal with a known um, event that may have some news um, when we are in a bull market so when consensus occurs now in this market and actually BTC is fizzling after some bad selling off it's not particularly strong BCH is worse off Ripple is looking like it's going to sell off some more um, Ethereum looks like it could be an inverted HVF where's your consensus bounce well, there never really was a consensus bounce. There was a bull market that dealt with a major PR event. Um, and now there's a different kind of market, which hasn't decided yet whether there's further bearishness to it or whether it's going to bottom up and go up. And what was previously euphoria environment for going long into is now a lot of burnt hands, some morbidity and indecisive indecision with the control structure getting ever more involved on the regulation front. The whole secrecy, hey, crypto was meant to be secrecy. The whole secrecy narrative has now turned into the eternal ledger that tracks everything and holds the data for all and sundry since the Genesis block. Suddenly, some of the shine has come out. And this is uh, the nature of where the market is now and looking at it. So you don't get this thing. This is, this is a belief system. If you're a bull, you want to believe it. It's happened three times in a row, therefore it must happen again. Environmentally, that's called selective data. Um, environmentally, you're in uh, a consistent different state in those three previous years. Um, and I'm afraid uh, you can't do that. That's kind of like, you know, I've, I'm, I'm, I got married last week, therefore in 10 weeks time, I'm going to have 10 brides and be polygamous because you project out like this. The environment before was that I was single and very interested in a particular woman who was equally interested in me. Um, and the environment after is that I'm now married and I have no more bandwidth to show interest in a woman that's totally absorbed in the one I already have. Hence why I'm not nine more marriages in nine more successive weeks. Um, and that's, you know, um, it's frustrating because people seize on these narratives and they repeat them and the more they repeat them the more it gets some for some sort of folklore legendariness it's all it's the law of um bernays repeat a lie often enough and people believe it what ends up happening is people go yeah yeah maybe that'll be true maybe that's the thing that's going to bring us a pump off to consensus off to consensus let's hope it let's say it let's create you know let's create a surge um you know you <laughs> It, it's going to take more than that. You need the environment and the system and clarification and all sorts of things. You need to return to the euphoria of Bitcoin starting the year at $700 and actually touching virtually 20000 in a year. Um, that was the run-up and all that new money coming in that then now has had its ass burnt, kicked and is, never wants to talk or hear about crypto again. Um, and uh, anyway, so I find, uh, I just find Beware of belief systems. Be, beware of um, what appears to be causation and is nothing more than it just happened to correlate at that point in time with the events of that time. Um, raining on my birthday is not necessarily going to guarantee me a good year. Um, and you can't project an environment of one week into another because the environment into a different time frame because the environment is different. Um, you've had a major melt up and a major crash and everyone is asking, are we done selling off? Are we going to start bottoming? And you don't binarily, that's the other thing, it's not left or right. There's all shades in between. You do not go from 100% bull in melt up to okay we've done the full bear now we go straight back to 100% bull again I'm afraid it doesn't happen there's an in-between area where it churns it's ugly it's nasty it's frustrating it can go low volatility the range can get very tight it can pop and it looks like it's about a break and then it changes its mind and it turns back and comes back in and this is the potentially the range traders can make money here or the bears the late bears can still eke out some further returns if there is further downside continuation to have and those that are too early to call bottoms just because you're not at the absolute low anymore often get beaten up 
and there's lots of people who get and when you get the morbidity to the extreme where things man this market is flat as a pancake i've been going for six months when the masses start talking like that to me then i'm going to start thinking the bull is about to start again. Um, when the masses are stop saying, finding narratives and consensus stories about three years in a row, consensus has done X, Y, Z. Um, that's the point when um, the last bull has left town um, at the retail level. That's probably the moment at which every last seller that needs to sell or every last weekend that needs to give up is out. Um, and that means there's a lot of money on the side to come back in and there's new people still out there because the super macro trend is expansive, the super macro. Um, and when I talk about super macro, I'm thinking of Bitcoin since listing in 2009 and looking at monthly charts all the way through to where we are now, even though it's down um, at its lowest point, almost 75%, um, it is a highly volatile instrument. And go look at my bubbles you, uh, clip. The whole concept of decentralized money hasn't gone away. Um, what actually happened is you had a hypervaluation doing too much too soon that corrected and you add a bit of leverage in there and you're getting a lot of hyper emotive people that have gone from uh, gr absolute greed and FOMO to absolute fear and pain um, and have scalded. it. And it's not the underlying market, it's human reaction to FOMO and fear. Um, and when you add leverage and when you add... Um, walls of new money coming in and the controversy around our fiat. Um, it just is, was super extreme. Um, anyway, that's, uh, that's my take about uh, how you should mentally frame around uh, these concepts. Beware of causation. The other thing is note how someone like McAfee is no longer throwing out once a week major pump coins that end up self-fulfilling prophesizings um, inverted commas um, by a pump because we haven't got a bunch of hyper leveraged loaded gun shooter FOMO uh, investment money sitting on the sidelines who've convinced it's a bull ready to chase what's the next big thing what's the next big thing what's the next mini uh, um, ICO recently ICO coin that's suddenly going to moon uh, 30 40 percent 100 percent 200 300 percent and it's happening it's easy to be in that environment if he came out and was calling once a week pump coins um, and uh, his success or his perceived success um, would be terrible and his credibility would wane in my opinion um, immensely because and he knows that because the environment is no longer right for him to have a remote potential of having a high hit rate um, it is a cautious environment it's not the time for calling every week a new pump coin to move 40 percent even if you have a massive following and you're going to get some dumb money that's going to do whatever you say on the off chance you might be right in actual fact if the environment's wrong um, you can't make something happen where there isn't already some element of willingness for it to happen in the first place so that gave the bull callers who were calling long in a bull market essentially a lot of initial inertia that created a kind of leader and folk and guru and he knows and all of this way beyond their worth they're not they're not that smart um, but neither will they be that um, dumb. They have something maybe. Um, apart from being calling longs in a long market um, on small cap coins where even a small amount of money can make a big change, um, the environment is no longer conducive for that. So they're smart enough to know to adjust their strategy and to keep a little bit more quiet. And now they expand their time frame. So they'll say, oh, in five years, 10 years, 100 million. So everyone refines the big picture on time frames um, when it's a bear market like this. They get more vague about when this will turn because they have no mechanism for it. And that's the value of a method and a chart. You can follow the money. And the money tells me there is no boom sentiment at the moment. 
there is no boom sentiment at the moment and I'm probably slightly bearish uh, uh, bias bearish although that varies depending on what's just happened so there's lots of shorter time frame patterns where you'll get small little spill down and then there'll be a little bit of recovery small time frame inverted initial bit of a weak rally um, and the price going up so it's a tricky old market um, but forget narratives forget narratives which are um, not causation just inherent fluky correlation of course if it's a growing industry there's going to be more pr and while it's a bull run people will credit the pr with being the primary mover it's because it's blockchain it's because it was new it's because fiat is going to fail um, it's because the super macro trend is bullish that these things are going up and yes news events can be triggers or, or hurdle points where things kick off a little harder, a little meaner, or pause for a while and then go. Um, but they are not creating the trend nor the event. They may just affect the timings of certain things to a degree. And when there's not enthusiasm, they don't have anything to add. They contribute nothing uh, on any great level. You can't you can't create fire in a damp environment, um, and that's where we are. Anyway, lots of analogies, repeating myself, um, but yeah, uh, join us on how to actually play great defense with um, your money on our next free webinar, and go to www.themarketsniper.com, and we are actually talking about it's not what you make, but it's what you keep that matters in uh, crypto and a lot of people are losing at the moment trying to trade the same strategy that made them the money in a different environment that's like McAfee going and calling every day a new small cap ICO for a pump you would quickly run out of gas and credibility don't do it it's not nut season put your nutcracker away it's a different kind of fruit you don't go smashing all the peaches you got to get your peeling knife out and that's what you'll uh, get a little bit of an insight on on our next webinar at the marketsniper.com it's not for everyone it's not uh, it's for people that are aware we'll also include a small element i didn't do the, the last one on how we short but even if you're not comfortable with shorting you can play defense in other words not take a loss by being um, currently uh, hodler of coins okay speak to you later and that's my message and i hope it resonates share and like if you enjoy